how the interview process looked like in the so there were around 7 to 8 rounds that happened in the interview process how would you like to give a like a clarity in what kind of questions were asked so basically it was a pure theoretical round yes so like it, it tested your application of statistics as well as like concepts which is theory hello everyone so today we have rishabh with us now currently he is working as a data scientist at uber so in this particular discussion we'll be trying to understand how he made himself as a data scientist at uber and what were the various rounds he cleared to make himself as a data scientist now uh, we will be also talking about what's what are the various roles and responsibilities which he he takes here in the daily basis at at uber and we will be taking some tips and tricks for all of you guys to become a successful data professional so welcome rishabh to this podcast thank you very much sumit uh, you have always been a mentor so thank you for having me here okay so rishabh uh, the very first thing which everyone wants to understand it's your journey so how you started your journey and then how uber happened yeah absolutely so uh, i have in total around like 5 4.5 5 years of experience but before that let me take you back so i have uh, uh, like got up and did my school in in delhi then uh, after 12th i got a chance to study in bitspilani so i got chemical engineering as my stream so uh, luckily like how my journey shaped was in second year after second year i got an internship in one of our industries in goa so i went there uh, worked in a proper factory setup and understood what chemical engineering is all about and totally lost interest so even though the courses were interesting i didn't did not see myself working in a industry setup uh like through my career so i thought like what else can i explore and what else can i do so in my third year i did a minor in finance and uh, hence i understood uh, okay like financial modeling is something which i would be interested in or uh, how do we use data to make financial decisions or risk decisions would be something i would be interested in so through that course work i uh, like then uh, like studied data analytics i studied like how ml works machine learning i did a couple of courses and then i uh, got an internship in goldman sachs it was not purely financial modeling uh, internship it was more towards uh, etl and analytics uh, so primarily i worked on in the margin space and uh, uh, i built data pipelines i like structured how data flow should look like and finally what can we do out of the data like what decisions can we take out of the data so when do we uh, run rules on those data those rules could be run either in a uh, like software or through like general if else statements or uh, how do we like basically find patterns through a data uh, in data so that was my role during internship and uh, then after my internship ended uh, i figured two things one i had crazy interest for data and i wanted to explore something in the data uh, like bracket maybe engineering maybe data science uh, so that is something which i wanted to explore and second a uh, good thing that happened was uh, i got a ppo uh, in goldman sachs so uh, i got a chance to continue uh, from where i would leave uh, in my internship and i joined goldman uh, and worked there for four years uh, in a data engineering and uh, like analytics role so primarily it was like to build data pipelines but from a business point of view how do we uh, build those pipelines in the most efficient manner so that we can solve business problems and it also included uh, like deep dives into the data uh, analytics problems uh, somewhere there were applications for machine learning as well but not really because we were starting up a new product uh, it, it the product was apple card and it was in the consumer banking division that we were saying so my major problems uh, that i would solve would be how do we improve our customer acquisition what different products can be released or like can i help product manager release uh, so that we can get more customers use our card how can we uh, improve our customer satisfaction uh, in in that business so uh, basically my aim was to understand how the complete data pipeline works in an industry uh, maybe how do we source data from different sources uh, how do we store it how do we clean it how do we use it for making uh, business insights and how do we uh, use it to do ml ai like and all the applications that could be possibly done on data and how do we store the results of those applications uh, in a format that it is usable so, so when you were in goldman mm-hmm. you were basically working on certain roles and responsibilities yes and that's the reason you were not able to explore yourself in various other uh, 
like other roles in the complete pipeline yes so basically i would say in the four stages i called about like sourcing cleaning uh, modeling and then results uh, like insights deployment i was doing the first and second part of it and uh, in the four years in government i had uh, like enough expertise to do that well now my uh, thing was to do second and third part and then finally the fourth part as well so that i become like a overall specialist in that so uh, it, what happens in uh, goldman is a very big firm uh, like if i compare it with uh, like other firms or startups or let's say uber uber is also quite big but like goldman is like really really big so in that case the teams are quite structured so every team has one single role and responsibility that they do and i would say if i do something for like 3 4 5 years i would be a real specialist in that role so to expand my horizons even further i thought like let's explore outside and uh, like join like a startup setup or like a, a more uh, let's say broader setup where i would be able to explore a little more, more, more things in my role world. yes okay. within my role so yeah the, hence i interviewed for like uber i gave like couple of other interviews as well uh, i had like three four offers uh, so like, Like I had like Hotstar, I had like a couple of offers from different banks, banks, uh, J.P. Morgan, etc. But mostly, I thought like uh, Uber would fit in my uh, like career cycle like, progression better in terms of the role, in terms of the opportunities it was giving, and the scale it was working on. So these three reasons, therefore, I chose uh, Uber to be my next uh, career progression. So uh, how the interview process looked like in Uber? Because whenever we talk about any multinational company like google facebook amazon microsoft they have a very structured interview process and that they always follow so my viewers will be very much interested to know about what was the structured process uber followed yeah absolutely so the interview process was very very smooth very structured uh, they have like set things what they want to ask and the way the interview is structured it is very clean so no haphazardness nothing uh and it was very uh like interesting and exciting as well so i enjoyed it a lot let me brief uh like the audience uh, on the rounds so even though it was very uh, like interesting and i enjoyed it it is like quite challenging as well so there were around 7 to 8 rounds that happened in the interview process the uh, first is a screening round so screening would be like they would ask questions on sql they would be intermediate level questions just to know that a person can code uh, like at least uh, in any data language it could be sql could be python or uh, uh, r whatever right so they started off with sql then they uh, uh, started asking questions on uh, metrics kpis which is really uh, like the whole gist of how data scientists would work right they would uh, take up metrics and they would try to improve them using like product insights and all those things so basic understanding of the role is really important to clear this round and basic understanding having experience in uh, like uh, data roles is really important so the second round was a problem solving round this round was majorly focused on what problems i have solved in the past which is my resume and uh, like do i know the in depth maths of the algorithms let's say i have used or uh, uh, like uh, do i have the logical thinking to even solve problems so again this is more towards the experience side of things and uh, the mathematics behind so the interviewer would ask me let's say some maths questions uh, which uh, would be running behind uh, linear regression or they would ask me like assumptions or why do we have such assumptions or uh, when do we use different algorithms those kind of questions so that i have basic understanding so of clarity of algorithms is also very important basic algorithms yes no one is going to ask like in depth of deep learning algorithms or let's say nlp techniques or classical ml yeah. is important yeah. Yes, like classification, regression problems, tree-based problems, uh, clustering. Those kind of things are really important. Okay. Uh, third round was a proper coding round, so it was uh, mostly focused on very advanced SQL and uh, intermediate level Python. So uh, in, in SQL, the topics which I would like to like uh, say students to prepare is uh, like window functions, cross joins, uh, like self joins. and uh, then uh, how do we like rank uh, different things and like clarity between tens rank rank uh, row number uh, like different warehousing techniques as well like asset properties when do we use different warehouses so theoretical but mostly hands on uh, and uh, python would be basic algorithms strings lists arrays uh, the queues Uh, those kind of things and a little bit of data manipulation also they checked on like which pandas. would be using pandas uh, how do we like uh, again sort things and then like pull out certain insights 
using data frames uh, and like those kind of problems. So proper coding around one hour round and uh, like uh, quite challenging in terms of SQL. One insight here is like a lot of people do not understand the importance of SQL in our data role, but uh, it is really, really critical that you spend enough time preparing SQL questions uh, through different size, hacker rank or hacker or whatnot. Lead code. Okay, the next round was a statistic round. So since this is a data scientist role, statistics play a very important part, right? So uh, mostly concepts were tested and situational concepts uh, were tested in this round on A-B testing, p-values, confidence intervals, uh, when will we use A-B testing, how do we analyze the results of an A-B test, what might go wrong in an A-B test, how would we correct those things. Uh, for example, important concepts like the network effect in a marketplace. Those kind of concepts are really important for someone to understand and to read through. And uh, and it starts from very basic, like what is the uh, like how do you set up an experiment, or what is standard deviation? How is it important in an experiment? Uh, what kind of data sets do we have? What distributions do we have? So everything, basic concepts on statistics is really important for someone to crack that round. So basically, it was a pure theoretical round. Yes, so uh, like it, it tested your application of statistics as well as like concepts which is theoretical. But clarity on these concepts Correct. is very important. Like you should not be just mugging up the definition, but should all, you should also be understanding the way you, should, you can apply this particular uh, technique hmm. in real business problem. The next round was proper product round. It's a business round. It was taken by a product manager. They generally understand how a data scientist is going to solve uh, business problems and if a data scientist is good enough to, let's say, uh, not data, uh, the candidate is good enough to work with a product manager. So primarily they would ask how will we draw insights, how will we define metrics, how will we monitor metrics or what metric is important for a problem. How and would you like to give a, like, a clarity in what kind of questions were asked to you? Like, was it a situational based problem? It was a mix of situational, mostly situational as well as like product questions. Let's say if I am talking about customer satisfaction, right? So how will we measure customer satisfaction? What uh, what features can we release in let's say an Uber app uh, so that we have our customers more satisfied? What can we do to increase the retention of customers so that they book our cabs or order food from Uber app itself? So, and how will we measure those uh, impacts? So the proper logical structural thinking uh, is something which they test and then like overall know-how of the product, what the product does, uh, what is Uber all about. So all those things would be really important. So understanding the company, understanding the product and uh, like speaking in a logical and structured manner is really important. So at that time, uh, in this particular round, you were not having the complete idea of product at that time because you were interviewing for Uber. So what, what do you think that was something which you answered correctly? that made you clear the sound so would you like to suggest something yeah so one great thing which i did was i studied about the role basically the job description and i studied about uh, how what all teams are there in uber and what does uber do as a business about kind of products does it have so uh, what helped me here was to know from my research and from my background that okay i am interviewing for a team which handles mostly customer care related problems and uh, customer satisfaction Session is a domain in the whole product life cycle that they would focus on. So I had prepared my ideas of how can we improve uh, certain things uh, in the product beforehand. So that preparation is really important. Now, one thing that could happen is you come with a mindset that, okay, someone will ask me how do I improve Uber as a question and you prepare for it. But most times it will not happen. They would throw situational questions that, okay, one of my, uh, let's say product feature releases did not go as planned. What will you do to improve that? So in such scenarios, your practice uh, with your peers beforehand in a pro for a product round really helps. So do you think that uh, conversation plays a very important role in such kind of rounds? Yes, like, uh, you have to keep asking your interviewer whether you are moving in the right direction, whether this is this approach is something which he expects or he or she expects. And uh, they will also give you small hints here and there. Uh, and if you ask questions, they will always help you. So it, it's more like a conversation. It is never like an interview setting. But in a product you have round. to make sure that the conversation and the ideas that you are presenting are more logical and it is also something which the interviewer is also expecting you to say. Yes, it should be in a structured manner. Like you should not tell about 
ओके वॉट विल आई मेजर बिफोर टेलिंग की वॉट द प्रोडक्ट इज सो लाइक यू टेल योर फीचर यू टेल वेयर विल यू स्टार्ट यू डू योर प्रियोरिटाइजेशन वेदर दैट फीचर विल बी रिलीज और वॉट ऑल थिंग्स टू वी नीड टू लाइक मॉनिटर बिफोर वी कैन रिलीज दैट इट इज एन ए बी टेस्ट और वॉट नॉट एंड देन यू से ओके वॉट आर द की पी आई सो इट्स लाइक अ स्टेप वन स्टेप टू स्टेप थ्री काइंड ऑफ सेटअप विच यू शुड बी सो आफ्टर ऑल दिस राउंड माई फाइनल राउंड वॉज अ बार रेज अ राउंड विच इज जनरली टेकन बाई सम सीनियर फ्रॉम आउट साइड ऑफ द टीम आई एम इंटरव्यूंग फॉर सो दिस इज प्राइमरीली गोइंग टू बी यूज फॉर लाइक लाइक लीडरशिप क्वेश्चन बिहेवियर क्वेश्चन एंड हाउ आई एम एज अ फिट Uh, and basically how do i know my applications uh, in machine learning so those kind of things one thing which i missed was one more round happened before the bar raiser which was a ml round which was machine learning design round basically it uh, was a round in which they tested your overall understanding of data and ml and where ml should be used and how it should be used so uh, generally they would give a problem uh, of uh, okay there is a problem statement now the question would be what all features or data points would you need to solve that problem how will you build a machine learning model how which algorithm will it use how would you compare those algorithms let's say if i use regression or if i use tree based algorithm i use boosting based algorithms or like a random forest how do these algorithms compare within themselves and then out of these algorithms which one is the best to use in that particular problem and then how will i store the results will will the results be more real time or would the algorithm run in at a scale where the results cannot be real time and it's a daily run uh, kind of a thing so how what uh, database would i used to store it how will i alert uh, like the app using those results so the whole pipeline of a machine learning problem, problem. was discussed in this question okay so this this particular round was more like uh, the clarity in how you will approach a problem what all algorithms you are going to use and then how you are going to interpret the result and how you are going to yes uh, use that result so uh, end to end uh, like problem solving basically uh, machine, machine learning, learning problem, problem solving. solving so, so uh, you can also call this round as a machine learning system design round in which like technical details of which system will you use to source data which system will you uh, like uh, basically deploy your model on uh, is it going to be a api based deployment is it going to be like something else so how would you how would all that work and then uh, one key point in this round would be to ask the interviewer uh, like basically how big the uh, like cost of the algorithm should be cost as in uh, basically how much time would it uh, take to run uh like do we expect real time results do we have enough memory to run like a deep learning kind of a problem so uh, uh, asking such questions would help narrow down the scope of the problem and a scope of the solution that you are providing last round is the hr discussion where they would just communicate the results they would ask uh like what my expectations of the role are what my monetary aspirations are so those kind of things would be asked right so uh the complete uh, the journey of entering into uber is uh, quite hard how many days it took uh, to complete all of this was around 2 and a half 2 weeks two weeks yeah so it was uh, like it was not like yeah, i have like one week to prepare for one round it was like just one after the other okay great so right now you are uh, working at uber and uh, how many, how long you have been working for uber now so i have uh, like almost completed 3.54 months uh, two months yeah. okay and uh, what are the various roles and responsibilities you are working right now yes so at present i am uh, doing a lot of data cleaning eda opportunity sizing so my role is such that i have to work with product managers a lot uh, and uh, in terms of working i would work with what all features can we actually release so opportunity uh, like sizing of that particular feature release then a lot of experimentation so we do a lot of ab tests ab n multiple tests uh, so setting up that experiment uh, in the system uh, seeing randomization seeing uh, the results analyzing results so that is like around 30 40% of my role and then little bit would be related to machine learning and then one uh, important statistical advanced level uh, like thing is causal ml so some uh, members in the team also do causal ml which i would be interested in learning in as my career progresses in uber so uh, like such uh, is my role uh, like uh, as i would like progress so right now you have uh, just joined the team so you have you are just working on most mostly on eda and data cleaning and, EDA and experimentation yes okay, so act like um, in nutshell if you want to give some suggestions to those who are listening to you maybe the freshers or maybe the enthusiasts who want to enter in the field of data science so what are the 
like your three mantras that you wanted to give to my viewers yeah absolutely so this is primarily for anyone who is studying uh, and wants to enter in a data scientist role or a data field in general uh, never discount the importance of uh, sql uh, and databases and understanding of warehousing uh, in general so the second thing i would say is the product knowledge and made, uh, like developing that product thinking as to uh, how can we improve a certain product or what all features can we uh, like use and this using a data lens if you're looking for a data scientist role of course you have to like think through a data scientist uh, position so basically it's uh, like important why product thinking is important because end of the day if i have to be a successful uh, data scientist it should be that what impact i created by improving the product using data uh, using ml using artificial intelligence so all these are only important as much as they help enhance the business otherwise there is no application for data scientist so uh, that is a very important and uh, third thing i would say is uh, you also along with your technical skills you need to concentrate on building like good communication skills and building that network which will help you get that job so uh, like use linkedin uh, like and uh, uh, build good leadership and communication skills and have clarity about what role you are interviewing for all that comes under your preparation so interview is another skill set so once you've learned your python once you've learned your ml your journey does not stop there learning how to give interviews is a second thing which is very important so third point would be around that uh, which i would say that students should work on great so uh, that was all about this particular discussion and uh, if if i want to summarize this particular discussion it will be most uh, mostly around how you can join into so he has given you the example and with the detailed uh, explanation regarding what all uh, steps or what all rounds you will be having in uber but i think that the rounds will differ as you if uh, you to choose a particular team right yeah i mean so uh, uh, rounds for a data scientist would remain constant okay. the applications uh, of the questions would vary based on different teams so let's say if i'm joining the risk team my questions will be more focused around risk if i'm uh, joining the customer team i my my questions will be more about how do we improve our customer satisfaction yes. you know? so uh, guys if you wanted to join any other any company which is multinational you will find out such rounds and uh, he has given you a clear clarity a clear clear picture regarding what all rounds you would face so if you are preparing yourself for any major company maybe google maybe facebook maybe amazon please make sure that your sql is number one which is very important you should master it then your logical thinking your clarity in product and followed by your good overall communication skill and your uh, your your preparation for the that particular interview that is equally more important i hope you guys enjoyed listening to us and if you have any questions related to this discussion or in general if you want to ask any question please drop your question in the comment section we would love to answer all your queries also if you want to connect with us you can search us over over linkedin and we will be happy to connect with all of you uh, see you guys in the next discussion till then keep watching and keep learning all the best